Jordan Bay on Sebago Lake. It is late October, and with the urge to spawn, the landlocked salmon are moving into the tributaries. The Jordan River, also known as Panther Run, is one of the tributaries that the salmon return to each fall. At the Mill Street Dam and Fish Trap on Panther Run, the salmon can be seen leaping into the air in the pool below. Today we're going to have a look below the surface to check out the salmon that have returned so far. Fishway here at Panther Run Fish Trap is being turned on today, so we're going to be able to take a look at the first few salmon moving up inside. We'll be able to see how that all works and what they do once they get up in there. After just a couple minutes, you can see more and more salmon starting to come around the chute looking for their way up inside. If you guys are ready, let's head up inside. Once the salmon make it up the fishway, they come through this short corridor through a graded funnel, similar to a bait trap. Once they pass through that opening, they can't go back the other way and back down the chute. From this entrance pool, the salmon are sorted out by Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife staff. The location of any fin clippings help determine age class and are divided up by male and female. Once the salmon are determined to be male or female, 
that then moved into makeshift pens created by these dividers on the concrete raceway. They helped to keep the salmon separated, but also allow the fresh flowing water from Panther Run to circulate through the building and then back out through the chute, back into the river. After the first few salmon had made their way up into the trap, we then left for a couple hours and returned to see how many more salmon had made their way up in. Now comes the task of sorting and counting all the salmon that make their way up into the trap over the next several days. In the first few hours of the trap being opened on this day, 122 salmon were checked in. The salmon will continue to enter the fish trap over the next couple of weeks, and when it's determined the females are ripe and ready, an egg stripping day is scheduled. We are back a couple weeks later after the fishway was opened to check out the season's first egg collection day. First, the salmon are put into these gray tubs that contain a sedative that helps to relax them so that they can be handled properly. The female's stomach is massaged in a downward motion to release the eggs into a bowl. The same process is then repeated with the male to fertilize the eggs. This is then mixed thoroughly to ensure all the eggs are properly fertilized. A small sample is taken from each batch for testing to ensure it's free from disease or other defects. A return shoot is set up on these egg collection days so that once the salmon are spawned out and any examination or measurements are taken by biologists, they can be returned right directly into the river.
From there, they can return to Sebago Lake whenever they're ready to live out another year. The eggs are taken to the hatchery in Casco, where they should hatch sometime in March, depending on the date they're fertilized. Really neat place to see them, the leaping landlocked salmon. Uh, it's right on the sign when you come into Raymond. Um, but just, just pretty cool to watch up close and uh, you know, be able to observe them you know, jumping right out of the water and then also being able to see just literally hundreds of them uh, you know, down in that pool and, and down below. The day of the egg stripping, uh, there was, I think it was just under 750 salmon that were in the trap. So another excellent return. Uh, great to see you know, some nice healthy salmon returning in there. Uh, certainly, you know, good things happening as far as that fishery goes. I want to give a big thanks to my friend Glenn Geisel from Sebago Sport Fishing and Guide Service. Uh, he has really helped me a lot with videos down in that area. Uh, he's invited me down a couple different times and we were out on his boat for my uh, Sebago Lake Underwater Cliffs and Rock Formations video. And uh, last year we did a, a video at this spot, just checking out the pool below there. And um, at the time, uh, I wasn't able to make it down uh, to see one of the egg stripping days. But, uh, you know, we had talked about it a few different times about coming down this fall, uh, you know, to do another video down down below in the pool. And, it, and uh, he really helped me out with timing uh, on to be there on the day that... Uh, uh, Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife was opening the, the fishway so we could catch some of that, you know, first few fish coming up through, um, you know, up into the uh, fish trap. He had reached out to me again when the egg stripping day was happening so I could make plans to be down there for that. Uh, this is right in his backyard. So, uh, you know, for me, it's a, uh, just under three hour drive. So it's, it's helpful to have a friend down there that that uh, you know can let me know when these things are happening, and uh, you know obviously a, a very well known uh, guide, and and a, a, if you know Glenn, you know he's just a great guy. I've been out there fishing on the lake with him a few times, and it's always awesome. Um, I show a few pictures here from this past spring. I brought my son down, Hunter. You've seen him in a, uh, another couple videos on here. And uh, we went down in the in the springtime uh, to catch a few of these salmon that you're seeing here in this video. And uh, you see a few pictures of them here. And, and uh, Glenn took great care of us and put us on the fish. And, and it's just a great time. And he just does a great job. He has an awesome boat and, and outfit out there. And uh, would highly recommend him, you know, if you're looking to get out on Sebago Lake to do some fishing for... For some of these huge landlocked salmon or the huge lake trout that are out there, uh, definitely get a hold of Glenn. He'll take great care of you. I'll put his information up on the screen here, and I'll also put it in the uh, description for the video so you can find him. Thank you, Glenn, again. I appreciate it. I uh, also want to give a big thanks to Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. They, they allow the public to come in and, and check out these egg stripping days right at the fish trap. Uh, which is a unique opportunity to, to be able to observe something like this. Uh, the way that the fish come in right out of the lake, it's not something that, um, you know, they keep year round in a hatchery. These fish live in the lake and then come into this place and go right up into the building. I'm sure there's repeat fish that do that. And uh, it's, it's really neat. You, you, you see kids out are able to go in there and, and see these fish up close and see how uh, you know, the, the, the different staff from Maine IF and W, the fish culturists come in and how they handle the fish and, and, you know, they're, they're patient and they explain, uh, everything that they're doing. And, and, uh, certainly, you know, you can learn a lot about the process that goes into collecting these eggs and, and how that's all done. And we're looking forward to seeing what the run looks like in the years to come. Hopefully it continues to be on the upward trend. Well, that'll do it for this one, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate you guys' support.
and we'll see you on the next video.